What's going on guys, it's Frito here for your Overwatch. Blizzard has really been churning out these blog posts. This one drops a huge bomb. Legacy credits are coming back. You'll earn them in the battle pass and can use them to buy skins. The rest of the blog post recaps season two and gives us a glimpse towards what they're looking towards in the future, including them working on a new version of the on fire system that was removed from one to two. All of that after this quick message. Gamers, it's not required for us all to be neckbeards. We don't have to be thanks to today's video sponsor, Manscaped, who's got us covered from bush to beard. Beard. This time we're looking at the Beard Hedger Pro Kit. The star of the game is the Beard Hedger Trimmer. The powerful 7200 RPM motor and titanium coated T-blade can cut through the thickest of hair in a single stroke. The Beard Hedger was designed with a unique cutting angle to lift flat lying hairs for a clean cut. The Beard Trimmer is waterproof, cordless, and rechargeable so you can trim in the shower to save time and create less mess. Manscaped also created dermatologist tested beard care products to help you grow and nourish a magnificent beard. Cleanse your beard with their beard shampoo that is cruelty free, paraben free, sulfate free, dye free, and vegan. Level up your beard game today. Head on over to manscaped.com and use code overwatch at checkout to get 20% off and free international shipping. That's 20% off free global shipping. Use code overwatch at checkout. The blog post starts season two retrospective, a look back and the road forward. The Overwatch team has been preparing to conclude Season 2 as we gear up for Season 3, and we're incredibly thankful for all the player feedback we've seen over the past months. We'd like to take some time to reflect on this past season and give you a sense of where we're going in the future. Here's more info about what we're doing now and how we're thinking about longer-term changes. Ramatra stormed the hero lineup. We watched Ramatra closely when he first released, including community gameplay and conversations. We started asking ourselves some challenging questions about his kit's performance based on your feedback. What was the community's first impression of his kit? Is his kit approachable? Which abilities and moments are resonating with our community? What are sore spots? The next set of questions focused more on his viability. How is he performing as players learn how to play him? What compositions is he fitting into? Are there early dominant strategies? Answers here help us decide if we want to make any changes to the hero within the first two weeks before they enter competitive play. Ramatra's initial release was met with a lot of positive feedback in terms of fun factor. We saw a lot of great conversation around his kit and the overall design, but it was clear that you felt Ramatra wasn't viable in enough situations. At this point, there are many different factors Factors that go into making balanced decisions, including player feedback and hero performance, though this is limited to quick play data, which can differ from competitive. With our learnings, we chose to increase his power while in Nemesis form by upping his armor and speed. Alongside the Nemesis form changes, we also decreased the cooldown on his Void Barrier to create more overall uptime with his abilities. Overall, this set of changes had a large effect on Ramatra's effectiveness, and he entered competitive as one of the stronger tank picks, a big shift from his lower performance leading up to the changes. As we wrap Season 2, Ramatra remains a strong tank choice and the previous changes helped achieve some of Ramatra's overall design goals. Going into his release though, there was one ability we knew would be a risk, his ultimate ability, Annihilation. While an ultimate lasting as long as enemies are in it is very exciting, it can lead to some unhealthy gameplay scenarios. We want Ramatra to feel imposing and intimidating, but not feel hopeless to fight against. In Season 3, we'll be changing the timer on Annihilation so that it will tick down slowly lower if enemies are in it, previously it paused the timer entirely, and adding a cap of 20 seconds. That should eliminate many of the extreme uses and enable more counterplay while keeping Annihilation a strong and impactful ability. The next section is called Battle for Olympus and the other Season 2 limited time events. We set a goal in Overwatch 2 of having more frequent in-game events and unique limited time game modes. As we gather your feedback and look at whether you enjoy different events, we expect to improve and bring many of them back in the future. Generally, we want to craft different ways to play the game and give you fun new modes and events to experience. And we want to be more willing to take creative risks for these limited time game modes. We debuted the Battle for Olympus during Season 2. We're generally happy about the mode and player feedback around it, but we do think there's room for improvement. Specifically, we did not expect that players would pursue all hero titles during the event. We think some challenges were too difficult to complete in aggregate. Based on your feedback, we also plan to make a Team Deathmatch version and enable the mode in custom games the next time it runs. We mistakenly did not include environmental kills in our leaderboard tabulations. Zeus fights dirty at times with a giant statue on the line. And if you don't know, that's referring to the reward for the top hero with the most eliminations. We'll have a statue built to them on Ilios Ruins. But they say that will be corrected for any future battles. 
We also brought back the Winter Wonderland and Lunar New Year events. Millions of new players have come into play Overwatch 2 and have been able to experience these events for the first time. However, we've heard and understand the feedback from Overwatch veterans that these events don't feel as exciting when they come back around. Particularly if you already own the event reward, as was the case for some players in the Lunar New Year event. We are working to offer rewards that are new for all players more consistently. In Season 3, one of our new events will offer players an all-new Legendary skin. And starting in Season 4, our goal is to offer new items as rewards for most of our big events. That alone would be quite a transition from the reward system we've had thus far, but there's better news down the line when we get to the Legacy credits. But first, Ranked Update and changes. Our team is aware some community pain points with the competitive mode and matchmaking, specifically matches with wide skill variations, inconsistent games, and too few and infrequent competitive updates. We have a set of improvements coming to matchmaking, and we're also working on updates to the competitive system. And they link to blog post one and two, the meaty second one we just covered in our previous video. And now for the big one, reintroducing credits and hero gallery update. In season three, we're bringing back Overwatch credits which have been previously shown as legacy credits and have been unearnable in Overwatch 2. Now, all players can earn up to 1,500 credits as free rewards and another 500 credits as premium rewards spread throughout Season 3's Battle Pass. Currency in the Battle Pass! They did it! We are also adding more uses for your credits so you can choose from many potential rewards. Specifically, we are making two related updates to our Hero Gallery. First, nearly all Epic and Legendary tier skins prior to Overwatch 2 launch will always be available in the Hero Gallery for purchase with either Overwatch coins or credits. Coins you pay for, credits you earn. Or at least, you know, earn efficiently, or earned in Overwatch 1. This includes skins from the seasonal event mode, so now you can finally pick up Witch Mercy, Surf and Splash Torbjorn, or Snowman Wrecking Ball any time of the year without waiting for the event to roll around. However, the new skins, I think, are going to be locked in the event, so keep that in mind. It goes on to say, second, we're lowering the standard price of these legendary skins to 1,500 coins or credits. But they're definitely not saying all legendaries will be this price. Old skins will be 1,500. But for a completely free player, that means every battle pass, you'll at least get one that you can select. And then on top of that, there's other new ones that are free for everyone, always, as he mentioned earlier. Now, while I'm certain a similar amount of playtime that it takes to complete a free battle pass compared to the free loot boxes you would have stacked up anyway in Overwatch 1, we've got to expect that this system is still less generous than that. But I'm just excited that there's actually things outside of the base battle pass that you can work towards and you have more agency of what you're going to get. Because a ton of skins for heroes you don't play don't feel as good as that one killer skin you really want. But many of those will be the new skins that come out. And as far as I know, those will still be with Overwatch coins, which unless the challenges are more generous, they'll still take forever to earn. So let's not get too excited about how generous this is, but it's more so something better than nothing. The post goes on, taken together, these changes mean all players can learn a legendary skin of their choice each season from the Hero Gallery skins just for playing normally and without needing to make any purchases. Now, important language distinctions here. The Hero Gallery skins are Overwatch 1 skins, not the new skins. We understand that some players already have very large balances of credits. To ensure that all players feel rewarded for the time they spend playing, we'll also be rotating a selection of Overwatch 2 skins into the Hero Gallery for purchase with credits in the future. Okay, so although this does have the FOMO shop rotation, some of the new skins will be purchasable by credits. And if you've got a big, richy, rich bank from grinding Overwatch 1, well, that's a another rotation of free skins you'll be able to access. But you'll need to, of course, sign in and claim it. So those of us that were Overwatch 1 grinders and have legacy credits like Scrooge McDuck will certainly be watching the shop rotation closely because a lot of these new updates really only help new players that didn't play Overwatch 1 much up to this point in the blog post. Like, I already have all the old skins, personally, or at least the ones I want, and many players, I think, are like that. This is really big because it's some new things for free. As before, there was just no way to get it at all, at least for the premium legendary ones outside of the battle pass. And I'm not sure what they mean by other options to spend your credits on. Do they mean something other than cosmetics? Because we already can spend them 
on those? Or it would it be more so like titles or something? Or maybe like finish the battle pass if you didn't quite complete it. I mean, that sounds incredibly generous. I doubt they're doing that, but I don't know. I'm just spitballing ideas. They go on. These changes aren't the end of our journey to make Overwatch 2 a more rewarding game to play. They're just the beginning. We have more updates coming in future seasons, and we'll be reading your feedback to understand what's working and what isn't for all of you as we continue to move forward and grow. We think it's very important to share long-term plans about the game features and updates, but it's possible that some of these things may change as we continue to develop and test these plans while listening to player feedback. Generally, we want to add or improve systems that better celebrate players match to match as well as across seasons. One angle we have been exploring is revamping our on fire system to highlight when you're having a particularly impressive performance within a match. And while still Still in early stages, we have begun design work on a hero-based progression system that would showcase the energy players put into each hero and mastering their different capabilities. Wow, that sounds really good. I mean, I'm almost in tears, honestly, because this is like exactly the type of thing I've asked for, especially when you play off meta heroes that you just shouldn't play in ranked. Like for a long time for me, that was Junkrat. Ironically, he is good in ranked now, but in the past, I would just be throwing if I played him in ranked so I could play him in un ranked or quick play as it was called back in the day, but I couldn't really earn much other than some stats that are hidden behind a thing that I have to go look at and it just doesn't mean anything to me anyway. This I think players could really enjoy and is exactly the type of thing that I think they have to put in if you expect this game to be some endlessly replayable PvE experience, right? Players really want to just play their hero and achieve whatever they want to achieve in the game. Just give them little trinkets and icons and unlocks and acknowledgement for doing those things, whatever it is. I mean, they know this. One of my favorite additions in Overwatch 2 is really simple. Farah and Junkrat talk smack when you hit multiple direct hits in a row. And the smack talk gets heavier as it goes on. Like that's four hits. <laughs> Usually I'm farming a tank, but you know, things like that. Like just let us enjoy the mechanics and get us away from some of the other obnoxious things about the game. Okay, the blog post is near its end now. They say, we know this is an area that you all care about deeply and we will look forward to providing more updates as we continue our work here. Thank you for sharing your support and feedback. It's what enables us to make positive changes to the game. We can't wait to hear from you in season three. All right, guys, it was my speculation that season three was setting up to be the best. Because Overwatch always plays best when they stop adding heroes, funnily enough, because they get the balance in tune and they start to work on the quality of life things that I care about. It's all coming up Millhouse, ladies and gentlemen. Rewards, matchmaking, balance. Season three is looking pretty good, which damn, it better be because season two was some of our least favorite Overwatch we've ever had at some point. So they better improve that. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave it with a like and don't forget to click the bell icon to actually get notified when our videos come out. Be sure to check out today's video sponsor, Manscaped. Get 20% off your entire order and free international shipping by using our code Overwatch at checkout. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. I'll see you guys next time.